Hello and welcome to Ark Survival Ascended. This video is meant to serve as a kind of guide, intro, getting started, tips and tricks guide for the people on my Discord who are just joining the server. Basically, Survival Ascended is the original Ark, but remade. So if you know Ark, then most of the things that are true from the original will be true in this game. But it's just launched, it's amazing, it's an Unreal 5 engine, it looks beautiful. And while it is in early access, the devs are constantly bringing out patches to improve stability and bring down the pretty heavy system requirements. But yeah, me and the dudes on my Patreon and YouTube member Discord have a server, and if you want to join up, you're welcome to join in. But this guide is supposed to serve as a refresher for maybe somebody that's coming back to Ark who hasn't played it for years, or someone who's never played Ark at all. I'm going to try and cover all the basics you're going to need to have a successful experience on the island. Now the game begins with character creation. There's nothing too tricky here. It's all aesthetics. If you want to be a regular Joe with a totally realistic male body standard, you can do that. Likewise, if you want to be a very small person who spends way too much time on the weights and not enough time on the treadmill, you can do that. Likewise, if you want to be a blonde lady with massive bazonkers, you can do that too. So let's give this girl a name and jump in. Before we do jump in though, I'm going to cover the problems with the server browser. Basically, the multiplayer server browser can only hold 200 servers, and there's a lot more than that. So when you're looking for the server, you're going to have to jam refresh a lot of times until your server comes up. Don't worry, it's probably there, it's just going to take a while to show up. But if you do want the password, that is on the Discord. So after character creation, your first screen is this map. Now it won't look like this because I've discovered quite a bit of this island. Basically, you'll have nothing but these icons. They kind of show you where the most dangerous dinosaurs are and where it's safer to start out your journey. Now it's possible to start at any of these locations and do just fine, but generally speaking you want to start down by the green ones because the weather is a bit more harsh up in the yellow and the reds. Also, there's way more dangerous dinosaurs up there. So we'll start over here, right on the corner, South Zone 3. Oh, amazing. So before you do anything, have a second to take in the beauty that is Ark Survival Ascended. This game has had a massive graphical update and it looks stunning. Oh yeah. Oh no, that's bad. So don't be surprised if you literally spawn and you're dead. This guy is nothing to mess with. He's got razor sharp claws. I think he's in one of the Jurassic Park movies. And uh, yeah, it's not uncommon for you to just die off the bat. And there's nothing you can do about it. Ark is savage, both in aesthetic and in difficulty. But there we go, he's over there, and we didn't get any stuff, so we don't need to worry about it. You've got your armor here, that's important. And stats, so you can improve your health, your stamina, so you can run for further, swim for further, do more stuff before you get tired. Oxygen, so you can dive deeper. Food and water, so you don't get hungry or thirsty as quick. Weight, which is quite important early on, lets you carry more. Melee damage, obviously do more damage. Crafting skill people usually ignore because it only really lets you craft quicker, which isn't a slow process to begin with. And fortitude, which is essential if you plan on going to a lot of cold or hot areas to help survive the heat and the harsh conditions. And torpidity down here is to do with how quickly you're going to get knocked out. And boom, we've already leveled up. So you're going to get levels out the wazoo as soon as you start, but the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself some tools. And that means gathering some stones from the floor. Now, as a loose rule of thumb, you're always going to be wanting to press E on the floor, whether you're gathering stones on the beach or if you're gathering berries from a bush. It's always good to have these in your pack, and they never really take up too much space or weight. So we've spammed E on the ground a lot. We've got a lot of berries, a lot of thatch a few pebbles and whatnot, now it's time to start thinking about our first tool. It's going to require thatch, so we might have to punch a tree a bit. There we go, this will do damage to you, so it's not a, like a, a solution. But it's a good way to get thatch if you don't find any on the floor. There we go, punch that tree to the ground. Bucks and Betty here is pretty badass. So now we'll make a pickaxe. And then we drag this down to our bar so we can use it on the fly. So now we're going to look at stats. And to start with, I'm going to start putting stuff into health. Health is pretty important. If you want to play PvP, you kind of want to have about 250 to 300 health. But even without PvP, it's a great stat for PvE. Now on our server, we're mostly chill dudes. There's no real violence yet. I mean, that could change. Who knows? Now that we've leveled up, basically you have to select these stats before you can access the engrams. 
Every level you get a new set of engrams that you can unlock. So we're at level three now, which means we get access to the level three engrams. All the way down here to, oh, it goes up to, oh man, yeah. Level 100, where you get things like turrets and crazy stuff. But we're gonna start with the basics. A stone hatchet, a spear, a campfire, and maybe a cloth shirt and cloth pants. So we wanna make an ax now. How do we do that? Flint this time and thatch. And that's where the pickaxe comes in handy. This is the perfect tool for getting both of those. There are basically two gathering tools in the game for the most part, the pickaxe and the axe. Use a pickaxe on trees to get thatch and use an axe on trees to get wood. Likewise with stone, use a pickaxe on stone to get metal, which is valuable later on, and to get flint, which is needed for the axe. So boom an axe, but luckily enough, we've also gathered the bits we need for a spear, a cloth shirt, cloth pants, and a campfire, all essential. And let's plow some more points into health. Why not? And already, oh my god, <laughs> there is something weird about the shape of those, but never mind. So now, dudes and dudettes, we hunt. We're going to look for some simple to kill dinosaurs. And there should be plenty of these along the beach. Even the ones that will attack us should be pretty easy to deal with right now. Oh, except that one. That's a raptor. They're quite deadly. We're going to go this way. Now, as far as map spawns go, the far right green dot is harder than most because there's raptors on this beach and those weird therizinors with the massive claws. For the easiest experience, I would suggest going to the green dot on the left. But even over here is still survivable, but also we've got legs. Okay, here's a raptor, a great chance to show you how deadly these things are. Oh my God. You are not surviving a raptor attack, no way. Also, if you think you can come back and grab your stuff, do be careful because the dinosaur that killed you is probably still lurking around. In fact, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, expect to die quite often. Oh man, savage. So while we find our new mecha, let's talk about the status icons down in the bottom right. So you have torpidity at the top, that's how close you are to getting knocked out. And if you get knocked out, it's pretty much game over. Then you have weight beneath that. That's how much weight you're carrying and how much your capacity is. It'll slowly fill up as you get more stuff. Then the flashing red drop is water intake. Now you can drink from the sea because apparently it's not salty. Just press E on the water and you're good to go. And for food, this is where it comes in handy that you've been pressing E all the time, gathering up all the bushes that you can because you should have a healthy stock of berries by now. If you haven't been destroyed by a raptor. Oh my God, that guy's dangerous. Oh my God, he threw poo. Oh my God, this is not a safe place to start. So engrams, now that we've got the basics, it's time to go a little further. The things we're gonna want are a sleeping bag, that's your respawn point, a water skin, because you're not always gonna be near to a source of water, and then the basics for your very first base. This will be made out of thatch, which is not the most durable, but it's fine for now. And let's gather the things we're gonna need for our first base. So eventually you'll be able to learn almost everything in this tree. However, if you're playing with friends, it's kind of good to specialize. Maybe you're gonna be the base building guy and your friend can be all about the weapons and the armor, etc., etc. But let's learn thatch ceiling and thatch roof for now. Oh, now it looks like we've been very lucky. Look, we've got a supply drop. These will drop around the map and they can be very, very valuable early on. The color of the beacon above it shows you what kind of level you have to be to get access to it. Now, because this is white, that means you can get it from level zero. So let's take a look. Okay, some good stuff in here. A war map, a signpost, some spark powder. Oh, what's this? An Ichthora saddle. And it's purple as well, pretty valuable. A water skin, so we don't need to craft our own. Another saddle, they're pretty heavy though. A cloth shirt that we don't need, and some meat that might come in handy. Now these other little bits here are to do with the bosses. This is late game. Basically, when you fight the bosses in this game, you're gonna wanna have to come over here, use the artifacts that it says here to craft these summoning idols, and then go and fight the boss. But that's way late game, nothing to worry about yet. However, weight does seem to be an issue for us, so we're gonna drop these saddles. 
Ordinarily, I'd find a chest for these, but for now, we won't need them for the purposes of this video. Oh, piranhas, like I said, the water is not a safe space. So with the basics under wrap and survival not really an issue, it's time to think about building our first base. We're going to want to put some things on our hotbar to craft this. We're going to put the foundation, walls, and the roof. These are the only three things we'll really need. We're also going to make a door as well because doors are pretty cool. And if you're looking for where the doorway goes, it's in thatch wall. Some recipes have kind of been bundled into each other for Ark Survival Ascended, and that's pretty cool. So when it glows white, it means you can craft it, and we can gather the bits we need to make these crafts while we're crafting. Pretty cool. But the bottleneck for us is fiber, which means we've got to do a lot of berry gathering. So here we go. My pack is way overloaded, probably because I looted that supply cache earlier. But I've got the basics to get started with the base. So we've got five foundations. And we're going to put these down. Now, building an arc is a lot of fun. We're going to put down a foundation here, 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 and here. We've got one more than we need, but that's fine. Then we're going to put down some walls. And we're going to need eight of these to get our first base up and running. It's going to be very, very, very simple, this base, but that's all it has to be. Because all you really want to do to start with is worry about surviving. We can worry about thriving later on. Now, if you want to put in windows or a doorway, you can press R and it'll cycle through the available options on the building material that you have. So we'll put a window over here, I reckon, one there and there, and one out the front door. Looking pretty good. So that's the walls in place. Now we've got to think about rooftops. So we'll drag these down onto our bar. We're going to need four of these triangle pieces and four of these regular pieces. So let's go and grab that thatch. So here we go, time to put the finishing touches on our first little house. Now this thing won't protect you from a lot of dinosaurs. Basically, if you want to come back here because you're being chased in the world and you hide inside your house, a dinosaur is going to smash your house to bits to get the meaty, juicy you inside. So as a rule of thumb, if you're getting chased, it's better just to die than to lead them back to your base where you're going to get KO'd and destroy your house in the process anyway. So we'll put the rooftops like that oops no now if you do make a mistake you can empty your hand hold down e on the block and then pick it up simple now in the corners we're going to put these little bits oh man nice little tiki hut now it's time to put down our campfire and we're going to put this campfire inside because you can put it inside it won't start a fire and that's generally safer plus it'll give you a nice light source inside your house now, by default, it snaps to the center of these foundations, but I don't like that. That's a bit, you know, restricting. So if you hold Q, you can put it wherever you want. And we're going to put this, ooh, yeah, in between there. Looks good to me. Campfire is going to need some wood, so you open the inventory by holding down E and toss some wood in here. Now, when you tap E, it'll light the fire. Oh, yeah, and give this nice warm glow inside our house. Pretty cool. Most things you interact with, you just hover over it, hold down E, and you'll get a spin wheel of all the things you can do. So we have a weapon, a house, and a campfire. It's time to go to the next step before night falls. Night isn't super deadly. It is super long, though. So waiting it out is not really a realistic option. We're going to try and get some leather now. So to get leather, we're going to focus on dodos. Dodos are basically one-shot kills. Not very deadly at all, and they are a good source of hide early on. If you can find the body. Where did he go? There we go. Using an axe on the body will get you some nice little meat. And, oh my god, what the hell is that? Can we kill this thing? It's a Trudon. I think we can get it. I think we can kill this thing. Nope, he's knocked us out. And we're dead. Oh my god. Oh my god, but we've had horrible luck. Raptor spawns so close to our bases this early in the game. This is savage. But this is Ark. This is how brutal and deadly it can be. Now, eating berries is great, but do be careful you don't eat the narco berries. These are narcotics, and they will knock you out. And the last thing you want to do is pass out on the beach 
getting stoned on narco berries because that's a great way to become raptor food. Oh my god, and there they are over there. Those frickin' savages. Also, a lot of the creatures you're going to hunt are going to try and run away, and that's where one thing you can craft is going to come in super handy. Now, doing what we've done this episode has already got us to level 9, which means we should have unlocked bowlers. There we go, yeah. And these are basically things you swing around, and uh, they wrap around a dinosaur's legs and stop them from moving. They cost 3 hide, but we'll usually get more than 3 hide from the dinosaurs we need this to kill. Now spears have a big chance to break, so it's also really good to grab as many of these as you can. What is that? Is that a bad guy? That's a bad guy. So having four or five spears at any given time is usually a good idea, also because you can hold right click and throw them. But that's a bit of a waste, and these things can break really randomly. So let's see if we can use a bowler on this parasaur here, and then take his hide. Put the bowler on our hotbar, switch to it, hold down left click. We get a tick when we hover over to show you that this thing can be bowlered. Basically things with four legs can't really be, but things with two, yeah. Boom, so we got him. Now we get the spear, aim for the head, bam. Lights out for you, son. And use the axe to get this delicious meat and leather. Oh yeah, look at that. He's a big dude, and we got 25 bits of hide from him. Great! That's exactly what we need to put down a sleeping bag. So we'll open up the fire, put the meat that we got from him in there as well, because this will cook up into a much better food source for us than berries. So we'll craft a sleeping bag now, and this is again one of the really essential crafts. With the sleeping bag in place, you can right-click on it and set it as your spawn point. We'll put it over here in the corner next to the fire, nice and warm. And so now with the sleeping bag in place, when we die, we can spawn back here, but also you can use sleeping bags for travel. So if you want to kill yourself, spawn over in a different location, like one of the more dangerous zones, you can set up a little base up there as well. So thank you for watching this quick tip survival guide for Ark Survival Ascended. If you want to see more videos on Ark, whether it's the multiplayer server that we have on our Discord, for Patreon and YouTube members, or if it's deeper dives into how to tame an animal and other advanced concepts in the game, let me know in the comments section. But we got the basics covered today. We have our first little thatch house you can see here. It's not exactly a mansion, but it's a great first step. We've got a campfire for food and warmth, we've got a bed for sleeping and respawning, and we've got the basic tools to get us going. So until next time, my dudes, take care.